All right, welcome everyone and very glad that you could join us today. My name is Paula Newcomb and I'm the Northeast Regional Coordinator um, from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I will be the host and question moderator for today's webinar, Best Practices for Preserving Board Minutes. Today's presenter is Kim Haggerty. She's the Director of Digitization and Micrographic Services at the Indiana Archives and Records Administration. So after this webinar has been transcribed, it will be available on the Indiana State Library's archive webinars page. If you're watching an archived recording of this presentation, information on how to obtain your LEU is in the video's description in YouTube. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to the Indiana State Library's e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word, and check our continuing education website for other professional development opportunities. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, start with a reminder. So in the chat, make sure you change the host and panelists to everyone so you can so everybody can see your question. Um, also, um, we're going to talk. This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about a little bit about the background about uh, what digitization means for the board minutes and also go over the retention schedule and some best practices. And then at the end, we will take your questions. So I'm gonna change or turn this now over to Kim. Hi everybody, I'm Kim Haggerty. Um, I also have Bree Hutchison with me. Hello. <laughs> She's with me just to make sure that I stay on track and to help with the questions uh, if we have additional questions as well. Um, so I'm going to turn off my video so I can concentrate on what I need to say and not try to look at myself or anything silly. And I'm in the back, uh, in the basement as well. So um, the video might interfere with the um, translation. So uh, there we go. And we can go ahead and um, next slide, Paula. So the background um, of uh, preserving the minutes, the board minutes, um, the uh, retention schedule has been around at least since 2010. Um, and in 2020, the Indiana Archives and Records Administration decided to create a new position for county local records management. Um, and this is a liaison position. This uh, position was started to bring awareness of records management to the county local agencies. Uh, when Amy Christensen was hired, she began um, contacting county local agencies and explaining uh, records management. And one of her priorities basically was critical records. She found that um, there were a lot of critical records that had not been microfilmed properly, uh, that there was a lot of gaps in our collection at the records, um, at the archives. So she started there uh, contacting people, creating regular newsletters. And, um, and as far as the critical records with the minutes, those are your, um, it's the way to document the history of your organization. So you can go, uh, we can go to the second slide. And um, so the retention schedule that we're gonna really focus on today is the Gen 1001. Um, this is, Gen is the general, the county local general schedule. 10 is for the year 2010. And 01 was the very first uh, record series that was created for that year, which is minutes. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. And here is the actual um, retention schedule itself. And so the minutes are official minutes of any county, local agency, board, commission, or any division. This does include the agendas and other supporting documents presented at the meeting. And this is a critical record. So uh, the retention period on these, they are permanent and they're critical. 
we ask that they are microfilmed according to the 60 IAC2 standards, which there is a link to the 60 IA2 standards on our website that you can refer to later, um, especially if you're going to be working with a different vendor other than um, the state imaging lab. Uh, once you have microfilmed, you will transfer that original microfilm roll to the Indiana archives. Um, after you've verified the completeness and legibility of your microfilm, and then you will also maintain a duplicate microfilm roll permanently in your office. Um, so that way that is a, a complete backup to what we have at the archives uh, for permanent storage. And then you can destroy the hard copies after verification um, of the archives transfer, if you so desire. Most, most agencies keep their hard copies um, just as another access point. And you can go ahead and go to the next slide. The best practices for digitizing or preserving uh, your minutes. We, um, right now, basically because um, the state library or the state imaging lab, we are very small. We're a very small staff. We only have five full-time staff members. Um, to work with us, we are um, basically recommending that you scan your documents in-house uh, if that's possible. Um, these would be your old, older paper documents. Um, and again, it's all agendas, the minutes and the supporting documents presented at those meetings are the items that you would scan. Uh, the settings that you would set would be 300 DPI, TIFF format is preferred and PDF is acceptable. The other thing you would want to do is create an index while you're scanning of your minutes and have, and on that index, have the dates of your minutes and then how many pages are in that, uh, in each minute that, that you captured uh, when you scanned. And when you're uh, saving your documents, you'll wanna save them by the date of the minutes that, the date of the minute meeting. Um, you would use year year format, month or the year the four year uh, number, the month, and then the day um, that format. So then that way the computer will read it and keep it in chronological order. Because when we write that to microfilm. Um, the computer will keep all the files in the, in the correct order. So they will go on the microfilm in chronological order as you would prefer them to go. Um, IARA does, or the Indiana, uh, ad, Indiana Archives and Records Administration, sorry, does not require a scheduled timeline for preservation. I know um, this was kind of one of the things that uh, was a question. We got a lot of questions about this um, in the beginning when Amy was first talking with people, um, but we do require that they are microfilmed. Um, and the reason for the microfilming is that this microfilm is the preservation standard and you can um, use digital copies as your access point. Uh, and when you have scanned and you're ready for the state imaging lab to write your microfilm or write your digital files to microfilm, you're, um, you can send those to us via uh, a USB drive um, versus sending your original documents to us. Uh, we also on our website, we have a request for services form that you would also attach and that has the um, current pricing at that time, what, at whatever you'll, you would 
want to send your files, the current pricing will be on that form. Also at that on that website uh, is the a more in-depth um, instruction on the conversion process of electronic documents to the microfilm. So you can also look at that for more in-depth um, instructions. And if you ever have questions, you can contact us as well. Our comp contact information is on our website. Um, one more thing about microfilming documents. So you can, on a regular roll of 16 millimeter microfilm, we can get up to 25 hundred documents on a roll. So it doesn't make sense to send in your yearly minutes for microfilming um, if you have much less than that. And most libraries do have, you know, maybe only 100 or 200 documents per year for meeting minutes. Um, and then, and depending on how many documents you actually have, uh, what we've been finding is it's best to put maybe 20 years worth of meeting minutes on a roll of film. Um, and another question that has been coming up a lot for us is where, where do people begin? Where should we begin uh, preserving our minutes? And the thing I would, my suggestion is if you have digital files already, I would start there because that's this, easiest thing to send to us at the moment. Um, and digital files are only really the preservation on digital files is about 10 years. So those could be in danger of losing data. Uh, so I would start with digital files if possible. And also if you if your minutes have never been microfilmed and you have old ledger books that are brittle, I would um, suggest getting those scanned if at all possible. Um, another thing about scanning, uh, we've had a lot of people say, well, we don't have scanning equipment. There are, there are other um, avenues for scanning. Maybe your county, uh, county office might have a scanner. Um, there might be somebody in your town or someone close around that has a scanner. Maybe you could find a volunteer that could help out with getting scanning done. Um, so that's, that's just another thought there. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that you're filming. You don't have to begin with your oldest collection. Um, I guess my, my thing to say is that um, if your collection is at, at is in danger at all of deterioration, I would work on those um, those files first, basically, um, so that your history is not lost. And I think that's about all I had for that slide. We can go to questions now. If anybody has questions for me, there's three. We do. I, and I, let me start off with, with another question. I know I think we've got some people from Indiana State Library. I know we used to um, have equipment that we would send out, like a scanner to help libraries scan. I think when Connie was still working at the State Library. I don't know, is Jen on here? Do we still do that, Jen? Or is that a Justin Clark question? Okay. Actually, um, that you brought up a really good point because we are borrowing <laughs> a scanner from ISL at the moment. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that is still something okay. that can be done. Great, mobile scanning units. Okay, I'll send that information also out at you know when I send the follow up so you guys can have more information. Um, all right, I'm going to start with some of the questions. Um, I think the first one came from Leslie. I am a new director. How do we know if any minutes agenda has been already sent for microfilming? That's a great question. Um, you can send an email to arc at 
iara.in.gov. That'll go right to our reference archivist out at the archives, and they can let you know if they have anything in their collection for your library. Great. Um, the next question, our oldest records do not include agendas or supporting documents, but only handwritten minutes in large ledger books. That is completely fine. Whatever you have um, is what we would microfilm. You don't have to create something new. Um, you just, just preserve what you have. Okay. Um, the next one, if we have ledger books that are scanned, but they are not dated, what should we do? Oh, uh, do you, have, I would say if they're not dated, if you can just probably put the year on them, if you know what year they happened in. So like if, if they're like from, you know, 1910, uh, I guess I, yeah, I guess they can just, just be some kind of date on them. Okay. Um, here's a suggestion. Uh, Rico was able to do large batch scanning for us several years ago. So if anyone's looking to outsource the scanning, but unsure if they still offer that service. So that's a good thing to check into. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you mentioned the price list is available on your website, but can you give a ballpark figure of cost to get 20 years worth microfilmed? That will help with financial planning. Yes, uh, this was, this was a, a contentious point for some libraries. So a roll of microfilm, if you send us your digital files, one roll of microfilm is $40 to write that master roll. And then to create your duplicate, it is $15. So we're looking at roughly $55 for 20 years worth, probably. As long as you have less than 2,500 documents, that's how much would go on a roll. Awesome. Uh, Emma asked, could you write that in chat? I think that was the, your, the email to send that question to. Let me, let's put that in. I'm sorry, I've been oh. looking at the chat and I see Kara put part of it in. Oh, what was that it. again? The question about um, who to contact that, um, was it ARC? Yeah. What was that? There we go. Okay. That's what I, I yeah. yeah, and and they, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. They can also give you any, um, the record of like your county. So if, if you're curious as to what your county has available, especially as a local librarian, when you're trying to find um, your local collections, there's, you know, the state archives might have some collections as well. Okay. And also someone said, um, you're actually looking at about $50 for 2,500 pages on 16 millimeters, and they didn't think that was too bad. No, it's actually a very good deal because when we do um, actual microfilming, it's, I believe we're up to $85 for one reel just to create one reel of microfilm. Okay. Um, do we send scans individually or can we group them? You can group them. So they can be multi-page uh, TIFFs or multi-page PDFs, um, that's fine. Okay. And then they can also be grouped within like a, a folder of say like minutes is your folder and then you have subfolders of the years or however you wanna group them, that's fine. We just don't wanna have a lot of subfolders. We only, our computer can only go into one subfolder. Yeah, one subfolder. Okay, so someone said, if, as a follow-up, like four-page PDF versus four one-page PDFs. Right, yes, yep. Yeah, so as long as that multi-page PDF is labeled in that year, year 
month day format, then it'll, it'll work just fine. Okay. And, and we can always, and this is something that people do with us too, is they will send us like a sample batch and we'll just test it out just to make sure that our machine is, is, is going to be able to open it and we don't have any problems. So we can do that as well. Okay. So another person asked, so microfilm, so microfilm is the preferred storage. Seems like that is old technology. Will these scans be searchable? So I'll start, stop with that part. So if you're scanning, if you're scanning, um, you can make them searchable yourself, yes. But as far as the microfilm, the microfilm as long as, and that's why we ask that you put things, uh, that you name them properly so that everything stays in chronological order. So then that way, when it is on the microfilm, it is easy, easily retrievable but the microfilms themselves are not searchable, no. So maybe the question is why microfilm instead of digitizing? Maybe that's the question. It could be. And the reason, the reason why microfilm, microfilm is only your long-term preservation. So when we say, you know, these are critical records, these are critical records of the state of Indiana. So for long-term preservation, they need to be on microfilm, but for your access, you can access them digitally and keep them digitally as long as you need to. The only thing with digital is that you're always going to be reformatting them as the digital formats change. Um, so like with PDFs, there's a lot of PDFs that um, have to be updated to the newer PDF versions um, so they can be opened, those kinds of things. Okay, and then the next part, what is the URL for the form to be completed with our request to scan? I know we've got a few pages over here already set up. Is there, which, which do I have that form on here, Kim, on my page? Yep. Yeah, if you want to um, go to the next slide, I believe okay. it's on our resources slide. Okay. And I yeah. also so have it, them. Yep. It's that top. Uh, yeah, and you can go to the, um, there you go. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the state forms for requesting reformatting services. Okay. Is there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So next question. These are great questions. Yes, they are. <laughs> um, and then the next one was, I thought we could send out hard copies to IARA for them to create the microfilm reels. We, uh, because we have a staff of five, um, we got inundated with a lot of requests. And um, so you still can, but just understand that we um, have a very large backlog. And um, when it comes right down to it, it'll take us a very long time. So it will probably be better for your agency to go ahead and work with someone locally or scan in house with volunteers um, and then just send us the digital files if possible. Because when we write digital files, it's pretty much our our computer doing all the work. Um, so it doesn't take away from our labor hours here. Okay. As a follow-up, um, now maybe I'll have to ask more, more what you mean, Michelle. For an extra fee, yes, they will microfilm them. We pay them to microfilm our local newspapers. Who is we? Is that, do you mean IARA or someone else? Let me see. No, that probably is us, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, someone wants to know if you could go over the subfolder thing again. Yeah, the subfolder, so if you are, if while you're scanning, um, if you were to put, um, Gosh, what do I, how do I, how do I want to explain subfolders? So if you have a folder called 
uh, your library's minutes. And then within that, you just have the years. If you had a year or maybe even a year range, like let's say 1980 to 1989, and you have then in that subfolder, that would be your first subfolder. If you had in there your individual TIFFs, TIFF files or PDF files for the different meetings, that would be as, we wouldn't want another folder within that folder. Um, so start with the main folder and you can yeah. have one next subfolder, but no more beyond that. Right, right, okay. yep. Okay, good to know. So if you know, if you know that like you have like the 19, let's say 1980 to 1989, and then you have 1990 to 1999, and then you have 2000 to 2009, and all of that will fit on one roll, as long as, as long as those three subfolders are in one folder for that role that you're creating or that you want us to create for you, that's the, the way you would want to set that up for us. Okay. Okay, so I'm just replying really quick here. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I will get all the links and email addresses to everyone afterwards, so. Well, you'll rest, rest assured, we'll get you the right emails. Um, so someone was wanting to explain again more about the subfolder. So for an example, we could do one folder containing 20 years of docs and each subfolder containing one year, or is that too many subfolders? I, I'm, I'm getting bad with um, math. <laughs> so. Yeah. I think, you know what, maybe afterwards we'll explain it a little better. Maybe some, sometimes I'm new, I'm more visual. I need to see it. Right, right. Um, so we'll do that later. Yeah, we can. The subfolder, the subfolder can contain as many files as you need it to. We just, we just don't want um, every year or every minute within its own folder. The less folders, the better. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. Um, so if we do our own scanning and send you the digital files, what is the turnaround to get the microfilm? I would say between four and six weeks right now with our with the way our scheduling is at the moment. And, and when you, um, I, and I would just give us a call or give us an email, send us an email um, before you're gonna send your files to us. And we can let you know at that time as well, because we do have equipment that goes down from time to time, which will impact the schedule. Okay. Um, now, I think you touched on this at the beginning. Is there a reason this is now being required instead of years ago? Um, it's always been required. I think what happened is people just were not aware of it. Because we, for IARA, they only had one person that worked with county local agencies. Um, and so we were grossly understaffed. Um, in the records management department. And now we have um, now we have more people up there to help get the word out and work with the county agencies. And something to keep in mind with that is you guys don't have any expectations that it's all gonna get done tomorrow. It's something Absolutely. that's ongoing. Right, right. And no I think reason. the other issue with minutes is that it's such a small collection. Um, so we've had several libraries send us their minutes already. And I think, I think the most amount of reels we've made for any library so far is like maybe six reels. 
and that was going, yeah, and that was going back to like late 1800s. Okay. And I've had someone else wanting to, it, it's, it's clear as a mud, I assume you mean for the, <laughs> the folders. I will get better examples. If, if I had all my, um, if I knew how to do like a, a whiteboard or something on this presentation, I'd have that up and have it visual, but right if, now I can't. Yeah, <laughs> if you, <laughs> Paula, if you click on the IARA uh, state imaging and microfilming tab again, uh, yep, and see where the link up at the top where it says conversion of elect, oh, no, oh, 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 sorry, right there, you're passing it. Keep, scroll back up a little bit. Oh. I see this one. Yeah, that if, yep. If you want to click that link, hopefully it works. Oh, oh yep. There Hold it on is. a second. It, I pulled yeah. over on my other page. How's that? There we go. Want me to make it small or bigger? Yeah, and this this really talks about the what you need. Um, and how to set it up and stuff. So is this the subfolder here? Yep. Yeah. So your record series would be um, the Gen 10, Gen 10 01, roll number one, and you could have your, um, just like how that is, that subfolder, um, and then, the file names within it. So this is your, this would be, wait, this is, this would be your main folder? Right, that would be your main folder for your role that you're having us create. And then your subfolder is this with these images. Right. Okay. Okay. And then you could have, yeah, and so then you would have multiple files within that folder. And then the next subfolder, which would still only be in that same, that one, that first level of folders. Okay. So, yeah, so you wouldn't put, so like the January to June um, would be one folder. And then the July to December would be another folder, but they wouldn't be within each other. Right. And the main thing is not to put one, like a subfolder three. You don't want to go right. that. Well, okay. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to put a, another folder within that subfolder number one. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't want to put a folder in there. Oh, right. It mm -hmm. would just be the files. Okay. Okay. So hopefully that, hopefully that helps explain that. Um, yeah, I know I'm a, I'm a visual person. Just show, show it to me, show me what you want me to do. <laughs> yeah. So, so I understand that it's not as clear as it could be. So lots of another person's explaining it. I think that we covered it. Will these slides be available? Yes. I will get these available after the webinar and I will put links in and I will put the email in and, and give it all to you guys afterwards. I, I'm pretty good about getting that, getting out fairly quickly. So um, another question, what would the procedure be if we contact IARA? We, fi we find we have a large chunk of minute records not submitted. And when we go looking for them that they are missing from our premises too. Hmm. Yeah, and that has happened. So, I mean, if, if you don't, if, if they're just not there, unfortunately, the history is lost. I mean, we can't regenerate something we don't have access to. So, yeah. Okay. And you said 2,500 documents equals one microfilm. Can you tell me what the data size is for that? Oh boy, um, the data size, that just depends on your scan size, as long as our computer can open the document, it doesn't matter how big the data size is necessarily. Um, and that's where, that's where the um, scan sample, if you want to send us a sample of your files, 
to make sure our computer can open it um, would be suggested. Um, and, and basically these are also typically letter size scan documents up to legal size scan documents. If you're, for some reason, if your scans are 11 by 17, because they were a ledger book maybe that was scanned two pages at a time, we would actually put those on 35 millimeter film. Well, yeah, we would put those on 35 millimeter film because the reduction ratio of a 16 millimeter film is far too, it, it reduces it too small and it's hard to read. And um, so our 35 millimeter film, we can get up to roughly a thousand images on 35 millimeter film. And that is $60 a roll. So, so your rolls can vary from either $40 to $60 to create that master. And then a 35, a 35 millimeter duplicate is $20 a roll. So the, the price range would be from 55 to 80 per roll, depending on the actual physical size of your scan. And, and also Michelle brings up data size is gonna depend on format TIFF versus PDF and quality scans. Right. And it's going to be hard to say, say, all the documents that say a bigger library like Indianapolis has, what they fit on theirs. I mean, what they're going to have is probably a lot different than what a two-person library is going to have. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it might take somebody, a little library, I don't know, 20 years to try to get enough documents together to send to you guys. Does that make sense? I, I don't know. Can you repeat that? Oh, um, say a smaller library, would it possibly take a smaller library 20 years to get enough documents to send to you? Yes, absolutely. Yep. That's so, what we, I mean, basically that's what we're finding is the norm for the libraries out there. Yeah. yeah. Versus I have no idea how much in Indianapolis. Right. I don't know. So, okay. Yeah. Yes, we are going to capture the chat. Definitely. Um, I'm thinking of the minutes and other documents we've been uploading to SBOA. Granted, that's only recent years, but I take it that those aren't being long-term preserved, entirely different government group. Exactly. Okay. So if you can, when you're uploading those, save those digital files to a USB drive or, or whatever um, and send those to us to get those on microfilm, yes. Okay, and a, a, another question, can you elaborate on supporting documents associated with a board meeting? I assume signed resolutions, policies, plans adopted such as strategic plans. What about financial reports, appropriation reports and voucher lists? And we could cut that up if you want to. I can go over that again. Yeah, so um, yes, anything that was presented at that board meeting um, that the decisions were based on. Um, basically, so if there were uh, like your um, treasurer, your, yeah, your financial reports, any of those reports, um, yes, you would, those would be the supporting documents. Okay. At this point, the chat stopped. Any, oh, project bids, do we put those in? So if you're like doing a renovation project, changing carpet. Yes, yep. I would put those in as well. Okay. Absolutely. Because that's gonna help with the history and how, how all of that was determined. Okay. Any other questions? It looks like it slowed down a lot. You guys covered a lot of different things in your, in your questions. So that's been great. 
newspaper clippings. Hmm. We did have a library. Um, yes. So basically when it comes right down to it, um, whatever you guys would like to put on microfilm for your uh, news, or I'm sorry, for your libraries, for your collections, especially your local library collections, um, we, we can put those on microfilm for you. If you had them scanned, we can definitely do that. Yeah, definitely. For small libraries, this is overwhelming. It will take time. And that's why there's no time there, limit. Right. It's something just to add in. I know one more thing to add in to, to what you do. Oh, I see your older minutes had clippings of ads. And yes, I, I would, I would include those. Yeah. Cause we have had some that have come in older, the ledger books and we've, We've just microfilmed everything. Yeah. You almost listed when the board meeting minute was going to happen. That was a that was in the newspaper, one of them. And they had that microfilmed. Yeah, definitely. It, this can be definitely overwhelming. Um, reach out to us, the regional coordinators or to State Library, to Justin Clark, somehow, you know, we'll, we'll find a solution to help you out or make suggestions. There was one more quick question in the chat about stapled items. Mm. I would just un, unfasten anything and uh, scan them separately. Okay, any other questions? We could go up to 11, but if you don't have questions, we definitely don't have to. I think people are winding down. I am going to put the form for the LEU. Well, maybe at this point here, let's go ahead and um, maybe we'll wrap up. Um, I want to thank you so much to Kim for this great information um, and for those watching an archived recording of this presentation, information on how to obtain your LEU will be in the description in YouTube.